Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to discuss a little bit about what kind of skills you need to have to start learning about FPGAs. Uh, probably you know by now I'm well into FPGAs and I'm um, I'm using them nearly on a daily basis. So I I won't start by telling you how I started because I started a long time ago and things that were very different back then. Maybe I'll make another video about this, but I'm talking today. Today FPGAs and today young engineers or young hobbyists or young person. So what prior knowledge you need to have to actually start with the FPGA? Now, probably the first one is you need to know electronics. FPGAs are hardware. Even that it looks like software, you're writing software. No, it's hardware. So you need to understand digital and electronics. I, I will emphasize this. So you need to understand combinatorial logic, like gates and decoders and things like that, and synchronous logic, flip-flops, latches, so on. It would be nice if you understand some simple protocols or you understand how a shift register works or, I don't know, a simple decoder or encoder, you need to understand how muxes they work and demuxes. So ideally you need to understand a little bit about some simple um, protocols like I2C, SPI, but look, it's not maybe not very important, but you need to know the, you need to have, need to have the basics. Now you need to understand about how you capture logic signals, how you uh, re re how you display, how you represent logic signals and things like that. Okay, now the second, the, the second most important skill that you need to have is you need to understand math. And when I say math, I'm not talking about the high level math. I'm talking about Boolean arithmetic. So you need to understand logic operators and or XOR um, the De Morgan uh, theorem, which is a quite simple, which will help you to change from um, from OR gates to to AND gates. So, it's you need to understand a little bit of how you represent numbers. So, how you represent an unsigned number, a signed number, what is a a, a vector of bits or multiple bits basically joined together. Uh, so, why you need to to know those things? Because when you are going to start coding in HTML, you need to know how, what are the implication of using one, one type against another. What overflow is going to, if it's going to happen overflow, how you counteract that, and you need to understand how much how you assign resources, like how wide the bus should be for a certain type of numbers. Um, uh, if you know a little bit of Boolean math, probably you don't need to be an expert, but it will be it would be nice if you understand a little bit of uh, digital signal processing. Now, that's not a requirement. Um, as a beginner, probably you will understand those things later. I'm not going to go in details now. Um, the third requirement would be you need to have a little bit of analytical thinking. When I say analytical thinking, you need to understand structures. So you need to have a structured thinking uh, because you need you will have to represent different things in a structural way and joining blocks together. And uh, you need to understand how uh, the hierarchy works and you need to have a, like an analytical thinking. Now this comes with uh, programming skills. So if you have uh, any kind of prior Programming skills uh, is going to help you here because you can't program in a programming language if you don't have a little bit of an analytical thinking. Uh, you need to understand the types of data. I'm not sure if this belongs to the math or it belongs to the analytical thinking, but you need to understand types. For example, the VHDL, the hardware description language, it's very, very... Um, strongly typed so you define types and things like that if you know c it will help actually if you know c it will help you with the another with the other language with very log because the syntax is uh, they share a common syntax in different places 
Um, okay, I have them here on the. It's not scripted. I have I have it on a piece of paper. I just put it. Uh, another skill or not skill? Uh, how should I put it? You need to you need to be a determined person. So this is going to break your heart. You will come across very cryptic um, messages during the implementation. Uh, it will be a totally new jargon that you need to learn about the tools, which comes down to the next one, which is you need to learn the tools. So you will have special tools. Those tools are different. They are not like programming tools. They look like an IDE, like integrated development environment, but they are different. You write code, but those this code is actually not programming code. Your whole thinking needs to shift away from um, linear execution. No, what you write there is actually a structure of blocks which are interconnected and you, exp you, you specify the behavior. It's a totally different way of thinking which has nothing to do with programming. I know people say programming FPGAs. No, it's actually when you specify something for FPGA, you're not programming. You're actually bolting together blocks. Okay, or you specify different blocks and the tools they are going to try to understand what you want. Um, another thing that you need to have and is very important and you need to be aware from day one, time. This is going to take time. It's not something which is going to happen overnight. So, um, yeah, that's the way it is. Now let's ask ChatGPT the same question and let's see what what is coming with. Okay, ChatGPT. Starting with FPG. Let's see what we get. I'll go quick through these because um, I already put my, uh, let's say, my thought about this, which probably is going to be different here, but um, I'll try to see if uh, ChatGPT agrees with me or disagree. First one. Familiarize yourself with the fundamental concept of digital logic. Yes, you need to understand digital logic which uh, I, w I put it as electronics, but you, yeah, it's actually digital logic, electronics kind of, for me, it's kind of same thing. A logic gate, flip flop, combinatorial, sequential, yeah, okay, that's correct. Uh, it's a little bit more than that, but anyway, it's correct. Uh, research and select an FPGA development board. Yeah, it's here, it's, it's a matter of choice here. I, I wouldn't comment more about this. Different vendors, different tools, different, whichever, like whichever suits you. Uh, install development tools, obviously you need to put the tools, start simple, start with the simplest set of tools or boards that you can, the money can buy, don't don't go mad. Uh, simple things are faster to understand and then you can progress. Uh, HDL or Verilog, VHDL, so those are the languages to describe things. <clears throat> uh, there is actually a, a shortcut here, you can actually use schematics. I, I, I started with schematics where you, bolt, you you put blocks together and you connect them with wires, pretty much like a schematic, uh, which behind the scene is generating HDL. Um, <clears throat> now, something which actually is, I look, follow tutorials and examples. Yes, good idea. Create simple projects. Yes, good idea. Again, um, my first, actually, my first project was a decoder for a PC keyboard. Um, which back then it was just a clock signal and data. So you press a key and it just sends out, shifts out the, you know, um, a code for the for the key that you pressed. And then I was decoding that into a hex, into an ASCII uh, value, and I was displaying on some LEDs. So you press that and you're just showing on on some uh, seven segment uh, LED displays. So that was my first one and it's, it's simple. It's just a shift register which shifts in all this data, then decoder and uh, seven uh, segment uh, display, decoder display. It's quite simple, but very, very nice. And it, it was, and I was struggling a little bit at the beginning, but yeah, this is how I learned. And then I reused that block for something else. 
uh, practice simulation. Yes, everything that you put on the board, you can actually simulate before even touching the FPGA, which is a good exercise, but it's a bit obscure for a beginner to start with simulation and understand the simulation. Uh, explore embedded processor. Ooh, I wouldn't go there. Um, that's way too complicated at the beginning. Project ideas, DSP, signal processing, motor control. Uh, this is not for beginners. I don't know. I will stay away from complicated things at the beginning. Uh, one thing which I think is not actually here, you need to understand the flow. When I say the flow, the methodology. Why you need to understand the methodology? Because there are different checkpoints or different stages in the from the idea from how you what you describe to get to the to the bitstream which is the file that you load in the fpga and the fpga does what you want what you just what you describe um, during this flow you need to understand each step and what it does at each step because you will get errors you'll get messages which they will look very very funny and you don't know what to do and you don't know how to fix it and uh, Yes, you have internet, you can just put those messages and see what other people are there, or you can just understand the flow and go uh, and fix those errors, but they will break your heart. They will be very, very uh, weird messages, at, the, at, the, at least at the beginning. Um, continuous learning, of course, advanced topics, HLS. Yes, there is this methodology where you write C code and you get, a, you get hardware, which, I, in my opinion, I wouldn't start with that. I wouldn't even rely on doing that at the beginning. Safety and security. Yes, this is an application. There are many applications here, and um, depending what you want to do. So, let's say you want to make a copy of uh, an old uh, processor. Yeah. You need, in order to do that, you need to understand exactly what's inside the processor, break it into small blocks, and know how to implement those blocks. Let's say you have the so the, the instruction decoder, right? It's just a decoder. It's basically like a, it, it shows like a lookup table. If you look, if you drill down, then you have the uh, ALU, which is the arithmetic and logic unit, which in the end, it's it's kind of easy to understand. It needs to add numbers, it needs to track numbers, it needs to multiply, it needs to do a bunch of other things. And you can actually describe that in a block. So you need to have, um, coming back to analytical, analytical thinking and a little bit of electronics. So, because you need to, let's say the instruction decoder, you need to, un you need to know how to do it in, if you don't have an FPGA. Okay. I have a word here, which is the instruction. How am I going to get those signals decoded, which they go to load that, do this, do this, increment the, the program counter, do all that, uh, execute. Uh, so, you need if you don't have FPGA, you need to know how would you do it with with uh, gates. So if you don't understand how to do it with gates, you won't be able to do it with FPGAs uh, unless you're a wizard. Okay, so that's it. So learn electronics, learn math, um, Boolean arithmetic. When I say math, um, analytical thinking, a little bit of uh, you know simple coding in HDL. Learn the syntax. If you have prior programming knowledge, it will help you if you know a little bit of C. Uh, analytical thinking, I said, uh, you need to be patient and you need to have stamina, a lot of uh, determination. So I hope this helps the beginner to have a starting point and to know what to expect. And I hope this video doesn't is not putting off any beginners. I hope it's just clarifying what they need to do. Have fun and take care.